Chancellor Philip Hammond will tell skeptics the EU has never negotiated the same arrangement twice. Picture, Stefan Russo Philip Hammond will urge Brussels to face up to the reality of today and accept it is in the mutual interest of the UK and the EU27 that financial services be part of a post-Brexit trade deal. The Chancellor's argument will be made in a keynote speech in London and comes just 24 hours after a meeting with Bruno Le Maire, the French finance minister, who on Tuesday made clear he believed the particular circumstances of the finance sector meant it could not be covered within the scope of a free trade agreement. Rather, he argued, the best solution would be for equivalence, where both sides recognized each other's standards. The financial services industry contributes almost £200 billion to the UK economy, making up around 11% of the total. It employs 2.2 million people, 7% of Britain's working population, two-thirds of whom work outside London such as in Edinburgh and Leeds. In his speech, Mr Hammond will continue the theme raised in Theresa May's address in the City of London, arguing, it is time to address the skeptics, who say a trade deal including financial services cannot be done because it has never been done before. To them, I say, every trade deal the EU has ever done has been unique. The EU has never negotiated the same arrangement twice. It has bespoke relationships with Turkey, Canada, Singapore, South Korea and Switzerland. The Chancellor will insist, a trade deal between the UK and the EU must start from the reality of today, that our economies, including in financial services, are interconnected, our regulatory frameworks are identical, we have demonstrated how we can work together over the past decade as we have repaired and defended the financial stability of our continent. If it could be done with Canada or the USA, it could be done with the UK, the EU's closest financial services partner by far. Mr. Hammond is expected to add, so I am clear not only that it is possible to include financial services within a trade deal but that it is very much in our mutual interest to do so. On Tuesday, Guy Verhofstadt, the European Parliament's chief Brexit coordinator was in Downing Street for talks with the Prime Minister and David Davis, the Brexit secretary, and who afterwards insisted the UK economy would benefit from sticking as closely as possible to EU rules following what Raoul. The former Belgian premier said he wanted the UK to sign an association agreement with the EU to cover its relationship after leaving the bloc. Noting how his preference was for the UK to remain in the single market and the customs union, Mr Verhofstadt said, failing this, if the UK stays very near to the rules of the European Union that will secure jobs in Britain, that will be the best way forward for the British economy. At Westminster, the soft Brexit alliance involving the SNP, Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru and the Greens agreed to seek a meeting with Mr Barnier to promote their plan to keep Britain in the single market and customs union. On Tuesday, they held talks with the TUC's Francis O'Grady and agreed to hold themed meetings covering sectors such as agriculture, steel and the creative industries. In other developments, asterisk up leader Arlene Foster claimed after a meeting with Michel Barnier that the EU's chief negotiator had overreached himself in suggesting that Northern Ireland could stay in the customs union after Brexit, stressing how the draft EU Brexit text was not faithful to the deal reached in December, asterisk MPs on the Commons International Trade Committee warned trade deals with some 70 countries could be at risk unless the government obtained legally watertight guarantees they could continue after Brexit and asterisk campaigners failed in their legal bid at the High Court to force the UK government to release studies on the economic impact of Brexit.